Hello, and welcome to this special Sunday edition of Maddie's Rap. I'm your host, author Matt D. Talford. What is Maddie's Rap? Maddie's Rap is the show where we rap about things that you might hear guys rapping about at the barbershop, at a sports bar, at the gym, at a cookout, you name it. Uh, it's probably going to be a group of guys huddled together and talking about it. These are topics such as sports, music, women, work, money, cause, technology, social issues, you name it. The guys are probably going to be chopping it up over some food, preferably. But anyway, let me get back to my point. Uh, I mentioned earlier this special Sunday edition uh, because what we want to do on Sundays with Maddie's Rap is we want to talk about spiritual topics. And so in today's uh, special Sunday edition, I'm actually going to be combining uh, spiritual concepts or spiritual talk with movies. Why? Well, let me cut right to it. Today, this afternoon, and this is, I, I won't call it serendipity, I won't call it coincidence. Uh, you know, if you know me, you know my friends, uh, my friends, my wife, they'll tell you, I'm not a big fan of going to the movies. I mean, every, I may go and see a movie at the theater twice a year, uh, three times if I'm doing well. Um, I'm just not a big fan of going to the movies for various different reasons, some of which is, uh, you know, I don't want to hear any side conversations while I'm watching a movie. Uh, if the movie's packed, there might be some people behind me crunching their popcorn or whatever, and it just sounds like little, it's, anno it's annoying. I mean, it's funny. I'm going to say this about myself, and I'm going to get back onto the uh, subject matter. Uh, I got a group of friends that will tell you there's no way Matt is an introvert. Um, there's an introvert side to me, but they'll say, hey, you know what? An introvert would never be on the internet doing videos or whatever. But um, people, <laughs> there is a such thing as an extroverted introvert, and that's probably, uh, that probably falls under that category. So, Movies are, movies are not my thing. I, honestly, I prefer to stay at home and watch it on Netflix or, you know, YouTube or whatever. I, I don't know. But anyway, let me get back to the subject matter. So, uh, I got to tell you in advance, sort of spoiler alert, because, uh, you know, if you haven't, if you've never, the movie I'm talking about today is The Lion King, okay? And you probably saw that in the title. Um, if you've never seen The Lion King, I saw it when it first came out back in the 1990s. Um, I have a, the, the VHS at home, and it was a great animated film. I, went, I wanted to go see it because I didn't know how they were going to do this with the whole, you know, non-animated version. And uh, I, went, I went to see it in 3D. My wife wanted to see it in 3D. I didn't care about 3D. But I have to tell you, this 3D implementation of the movie was splendid. And if you're going to see The Lion King right now, if you got a choice, see it in 3D. To me, there's no, no other way to see it. It just... For some reason, um, you know, 3D movies are okay with me, but this particular movie came to life with 3D. Now, why am I talking about The Lion King? Well, as a writer, and, and, and uh, I've said this in some of my other videos, uh, you guys know I'm an author, and you can, you can see, a, you can, if you want to check out what I've written, uh, look at the description. I'll always, I'll always have a link to the, uh, to the books I've written in the description. Um, but getting back to my point, as a writer, I love to look for symbolism. Now, I'm a, I'm a nonfiction writer mostly. I did recently uh, release a, uh, a fiction book. And the cool thing with reading fiction is, is fiction, typically your authors in, in fiction stories, they're trying to make a point, but they're wrapping it up in a fictitious tale. And um, if you're watching it with, a, with an analytical eye, you're usually looking for that symbolism because just about every author that writes fiction puts some sort of message or moral to the story whatever in there and to me the lion king was was filled with it so i want to tell you again um, i'm not going to give away any plot or any line or anything like that as much as i can help it but if you have never seen a lion king you may want to stop this video right now and as a prerequisite number one there's two prerequisites number one is go watch the lion king you rent it if you, if you rent the original or go see this one in in the, in the movie theater uh, i'll tell you to go see it in the movie theater I think that, uh, uh, if anything, the vocals, the vocals were phenomenal. I mean, I just, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a uh, critical guy when it comes to vocals because I sing myself and I'm listening for pitch, I'm listening for tone, quality, I'm listening for a lot of things when I hear vocals. And uh, uh, Beyonce, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm a big Beyonce fan. I, I, I tend to prefer uh, jazz more and some more classic R&B to, to the modern stuff, but uh, uh, so as such, uh, Beyonce was never really like a, a big, uh, I'm not, I've never been a big fan of her. I respect her work. I respect her work. I respect her work ethic and I respect her work. I respect her grind, respect her hustle. Um, uh, for the vocal side, 
I'm more of a, it's not fair for me to compare it to the people I like because I like Anita Baker. I like, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, like Rochelle Farrell and these people that uh, deliver these big vocals like that are more in that genre. But now, let me say this. I've always said this. A, 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 a phenomenal singer can struggle with a poorly written piece of music and an average singer can sound phenomenal with a great piece of music. Disney always does a great job selecting music for their films, and, and this, was, uh, this one was par for the course. Uh, Beyonce, if, if you ever see this video, I gotta tell you, I've listened to a lot of your music because my wife is a big fan of your work. Uh, she listens to a lot of your music. She buys, every time you drop an album, she buys it. The, 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 the vocal, your vocals in The Lion King are probably the best I've ever heard and can stand up next to anybody. So great job on the vocals in The Lion King, Beyonce. I gotta tell you that. Um, you might say, who's this guy? He, nobody knows him, whatever. But I, I got it. I got an ear for music, so I want to tell you your, your, your work in that was phenomenal. But now, let me get to the symbolism, because I want to try to keep this under 10 minutes. Uh, prerequisite number two, and, and I apologize for dragging this out. Um, I just had to get those points out. Prerequisite number two is that, uh, <laughs> well, let me get into the story. The Lion King, and I'm, I'm going to make this statement, and I'll break it down. To me, the Lion King, and this is my opinion, the Lion King is the story of Israel. The Lion King to me is the story of Israel. But you may say, well, Matt, where did that come from? And, it, and this, this, this is the point of the, this, next, this next thing I'm about to say is, has been a point, uh, a controversial point in a lot of commentary I've listened to on the internet and a lot of books I've read, a lot of, a lot of commentary I've read. If you don't know who Israel is in reference, in, in, in the Bible, Bible reference, or who Israel is that the Bible's referencing, then um, you're not gonna understand what I'm talking about here. So, prerequisite number two is that you go and read, uh, if you're familiar, if you're a Bible person, you like to read the Bible, go and read Deuteronomy 28, and then you'll know who Israel, who the Israelites are that I'm talking about if, with regards to the Lion King. Now, why did I say that? Well, if you look at the beginning of the movie, here comes some of the spoiler parts, so if you haven't turned it off yet and you don't wanna hear this, turn it off right now. Now, um, Disobedience, if you look at, at the Bible story of Israel, their disobedience caused them to be driven off their land. Simba, Simba's disobedience caused him to be driven out of his land. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, his, his disobedience caused him to be driven out. Now, uh, if, you, if you look at what happened there, what happened next was that, uh, you know, the character Scar, he made some deals with some uh, with these, with these, uh, these characters that have, have been enemies of the lion's pride forever. They're, they're enemies of lions now. They're hyenas. Uh, hyenas don't like lions. They gang up to try to take down the lions when they, when they find a weak one and whatever. Uh, you know how the story goes if you watch any National Geographic type films. Uh, <laughs> Scar, Scar joins forces, forces with these uh, hyenas and then the hyenas are running uh, Lion's Rock or Lion's Pride or whatever the name, land, the name of the land was. I can't remember. So, <laughs> Did that happen in real life? Let's talk about it. I want to hear your comments in the, uh, in the comments below. I want to hear what you guys got to say. Um, now, the hyenas are running it. Where's that biblical reference, you might say, Matt? You gave us Deuteronomy 28. Uh, look at Luke chapter 21, verse 24. And it talks about, uh, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That, that, that to me, it looks a lot like uh, uh, Lion King. Next, uh, what is Simba? Simba's in a land somewhere other than where his homeland was, and he doesn't even know who he is, okay? He's, he's living like he's one of these. He's living like anything but the king of the jungle. He's living like anything but the king that he is. He's living like anything but the lion that he is. So uh, he went a long time, uh, you know, recognizing that he was different, but not, not really understanding who he was. And finally, uh, you know, the awakening. The awakening happened where he realized that Hey, you know what? I'm a lion. I, I, I do. And, and I don't want to give away the story. You'll see how that happens if you watch the movie. But he ends up recognizing who he is, and he goes back home, and uh, the land recovers. So there's some symbolism in there. <laughs> that land over there in, in, in uh, Northeast Africa has not really been, uh, it, it's been at war on and off since, since the time that the, uh, the, the Israelites uh, left. So if you're watching this on Instagram, uh, you, you tune in, this is it. But if you're on, on uh, YouTube, I'll continue on. 
Okay, that's the 10 minute mark. Uh, we're past that. Uh, but but to wrap this up, I, I don't want this to go super long. Uh, Simba realizes who he is, and he comes back to uh, Lion's Rock or Lion's Pride or Pride Rock. Pride Rock, I think it was called. Uh, Pride Rock. And he comes back, and there's a war. And because the uh, the hyenas that are there and Scar, the guy who who basically deceived them and tricked them and tricked them into being disobedient and uh, basically uh, not just tricked them, but you know uh, the way this deception thing works in different parts of the but throughout the Bible is there's always something that entices you. There's always something that entices the the. There was always something that enticed one of these characters in the Bible or the people as a whole, whether it was Adam whether it was uh, Solomon, there was always something that enticed these characters to, to be disobedient. And as a result of their disobedience, they lost something that was important to them. And so uh, I could go on and on about this movie, The Lion King, but I can tell you just in my opinion from watching it and having studied the Bible for so long, um, that to me, Lion, uh, uh, The Lion King is the story of the Israelites. So... Uh, I want to hear from you guys. I know that to some of you that may be controversial. Uh, to others, you're probably nodding your head like, wow, yeah, he's spot on. Uh, I want to hear you guys' comments. And, and uh, so I'm going to wrap this up, this edition of Maddie's Rap. I'll keep this under 12 minutes. Uh, what do you guys think? What, do you guys see any symbolism in The Lion King? I want to hear what symbolism you see. I want to hear your breakdown of it. Uh, is this a sensitive topic? Absolutely. Absolutely, it's a sensitive topic. But I'll tell you, on Maddie's Rap, we're not afraid to tackle sensitive topics. And, uh, you know, you're going to hear sensitive topics when you're in the barbershop. Uh, when guys are out at the sports bar, they're drinking, they get a couple in them. They, they, you know, they let their hair down, so to speak, or loosen the collar up. And, uh, you know, they talk about things that are, that are sensitive. Uh, and, and that, you know, to, in, in my opinion, as I wrap this up, I think that uh, in this country, we have got to get back to having real conversations. I don't know where all of the uh, political correctness came in and, and uh, you know, being afraid that, Oh, somebody might be offended at what I'm going to say or, you know, if I say something to offend somebody, uh, they might label me this, that, or the third. Listen, you were brought here, you were created, people talk about, uh, uh, you know, life and such and, you know, how much time somebody has and all this other stuff. Let me tell you something. I believe that uh, we're all brought here for a task or a purpose. And if you're, if you're throttling yourself because you, you're worried about what somebody's going to say, uh, if you give your opinion, it, it may not even be opinion. It may be some wisdom or something that was placed inside of you, something to do, uh, some gift that you were given to, to share with the world. And then, you know, you're afraid of who might be offended by it because it's not the popular, uh, it's not popular. What I would say to you is do you. Do you. Uh, do the work that you were created to do. Be the person that you were created to be. And you know what? To that, let me bring it back home. Let's start having these real conversations. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot going on in the world today, and uh, people are too afraid to really say how they really feel because they're afraid of who they're going to offend. If you say something in love and you're speaking in truth, then how can somebody be offended? In fact, I got a T-shirt on my website. That website is www. TalfordArch.com, T-A-L-F-O-R-D-A-R-T-S.com. That T-shirt is a quote that a lot of people uh, loved, and, and I've sold quite a number of those shirts. But that this, this shirt has a quote that I wrote uh, a couple of years ago, maybe it's a year or two ago, on my blog. But that quote is, no righteous man is ever offended by truth. If the truth offends you, examine your heart. And I want to leave you with that. Uh, if you want to check that out, it's, it is on, uh, it is on, my, it's on a t-shirt, uh, for those of you that like to drink coffee and such, we'll get that on a mug for you, but check out www.talfordarch.com. And in the meantime, I'm going to get ready to wrap this thing up. Uh, folks, again, please like, and subscribe. If you uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, if you got to give it a thumbs down, I respect that too, because you know what? You, you've got a right to your opinion. I would love to hear why you're giving it a thumbs down if you give it a thumbs down. But, um, you know, whether you like it or dislike it, just leave, just leave your comments. I mean, because I'll, I'll be honest, when I'm watching other YouTube videos, to me, the comments are just as important as the subject matter. The subject matter is usually uh, coming from a single source, but the comments is the community. So, hey, let's get back to being a community, people. Let's get back to being a community and having some real grown-up conversations and, and, and not trying to be hurtful, but just trying to understand that, hey, you know what? This is an individual person with an individual opinion, and their opinion counts, too. Your opinion counts. Anyway, for Maddie's Rap, I'm your host, author, Matt D. Talford. This is a wrap. Peace.